Good evening, friends. Good evening. Uh, on behalf of the Bengaluru branch of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India, uh, I welcome each one of you for today's uh, special program called Manthana. Uh, friends, as you know, Manthana is an interactive session. Most of the cases, it's going to be the interactive session with the government officials. And it has been gaining a lot of importance and a lot of response from many members. And this time we have got uh, a special program with the interactive session with the officials of uh, you know, com National Company Law Tribunal. And uh, when we uh, physically personally visited the National Company Law Tribunal, uh, two dignitaries have kindly accepted our invitation and they are with us. Uh, they are none other than Ratakonda uh, Murli, the honorable member of uh, Judicial NCFT. And also uh, Dr. C. Ashok Kumar Mishra, the Honorable Member Technical NCLT. I request the chairperson, uh, Geeta A.B. to escort the dignitaries to the layers. And also I request uh, uh, C.S. Tiripal Gorige and uh, C. Ravi Prasad also to come to the layers, please. session with the judicial officials of the NCRT, a company secretary and company secretary Tirupal Kurigi and our own member of the assessor will make us to know more about NCRT which will be useful for each one of us. Frequent amendments in all domains of our services are happening and in this prevailing business scenario we should be highly competent to face the day-to-day -day challenges. On behalf of all of us present here, I wholeheartedly welcome all the dignitaries on the day as our today's speakers um, to this uh, session. The formation of our NCLT is a significant step towards attaining the first election resolution of disputes relating to various affairs of the Indian corporates. Once the relevant provisions under the Company Act and the Bank of Tessie Court were made effective, these tribunals would provide holistic solutions to issues being faced by companies, including those of finding up, oppression, mismanagement, and insolvency. So, NCLT plays a significant role to minimize the delays in resolutions of disputes, which will be really a boon for the litigants. Um, so we would like to say a few words about our institute. Our branch is the most vibrant branch in the country and we are delighted to have out of 163 branches of ICA in the country, Bangalore branch is regarded as the most active uh, branch catering to the needs of 14,000 members and uh, 30,000 students and always involved in conducting activities, programs for the members, non-members executives of government organizations, 
public sector undertaking and various other bodies. Uh, to educate our members and non-members, we have conducted a number of programs on GST and there was a huge response in the recent past and uh, this shows the interest of our members to learn and update and um, to advise our clients appropriately. At this juncture, we also organizing one more mega seminar, the state level conference on GST that is Avardhana on 8th and 9th of July. Uh, I request all members to um, register to the, this program by the end and make the program a grand success. Um, once more, let me extremely hold for that welcome to all resource persons and our official friends for this special program, Mantana. Thank you. Thank you Madam Geeta for the welcome address. Uh, friends, I will take this opportunity to introduce the eminent personalities on the dais. Uh, Honorable Justice S.C. Uh, Ratakonda Murli uh, hails to uh, Madanupalli Chittu district, the very hometown of uh, our chairperson Geeta Ayali. <laughs> Uttamantu Kulodhyogam is the theme uh, which has been well adopted by uh, Honorable Justice Sri Ratakonda Murli uh, because uh, his father was an uh, advocate, his grandfather was also an advocate. And his father was, uh, uh, has retired as an additional public uh, prosecutor in grade 1 and his grandfather was uh, appearing before the court presided over by British judge before independence. So that's the long history they carry with their family and he has been you know, uh, brought up in that family and he was born in the year 1955. Uh, friends, uh, Sri Ratakonda Murli was appointed as a district municipal magistrate in 1987. He was promoted as a senior civil judge and finally promoted as a district and session judge in Andhra Pradesh. Honorable Justice Sri uh, Ratakonda Murli retired from service in September 2015 from Karnul, Andhra Pradesh. After that, he is selected to be the judicial member of NCLT in June 2016 and posted to NCLT Bangalore. Uh, friends, um, as a judge in the state judiciary of uh, Andhra Pradesh, he disposed of uh, several thousands of uh, cases and hence carries a very rich experience with him. And all of us are blessed to have him with us today and definitely will be benefited out of his experience. Um, he is also a personality. Uh, who is well known and he is an uh, effective and efficient speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me to welcome him once again. <laughs> Friends, our own member CA Ashok Kumar Mishra was selected as the member of technical in NCLT in June 2016. Prior to this, Ashok Mishra served as the CFO and Director of Finance and he was the board member of HAL for five years. He has won several awards including the best CFO award in public sector category of ICI 2015. Thank you very much sir. Congratulations to you for having this uh, award. He was on the board of uh, directors of joint venture of HL with the Russian government um, called uh, Indo-Russian Aviation Limited and Multi-Role Transport Aircrafts. He served more than 21 years in HL in various positions played a major role in major litigation issues with the government of Karnataka and Orissa etc. through alternate dispute resolution mechanisms. He was a team leader and a member in various international delegations. He has conducted several studies for internal improvements of organizations as well as impact evaluation of go government programs. Friends, he is currently pursuing LLD from National Law School of India. He packed many qualifications like MCOM, CA, LLB and PhD and going to grab few more other qualifications as well. <laughs> Friends, he is a very good uh, faculty and an excellent speaker and was a trainer for various government and private business and training institutes including Lucknow University and VIT Mishra. We are happy to have him with us sir and uh, definitely all our members are uh, you know, eager to hear you sir. Ladies and gentlemen, please allow me to welcome you once again with a big round of applause. <laughs> Friends, CS Tirupal Gorige is a member of Company Secretaries Institute and uh, he has obtained a postgraduate diploma in finance management from IGNOU, one of the registered insolvency professionals 
registered under the BIC code with by the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Board of India and also one of the research members of the Kampila research team constituted in the year 2015 by the Center of Corporate Governance and Research and Training uh, ICSI Mumbai. Uh, he is also a very, very effective speaker and definitely all of us will be uh, getting a lot of information and knowledge from him. Please join me today, welcome him once again. Friends, uh, C. Ravi Prasad is our own regular member and uh, regular uh, faculty member and the speaker for most of our programs. So, uh, Ravi Prasad actually born in the temple town called Udupi and is a commerce graduate uh, from Mysore. After graduation, he has joined MSSV and company has started the contents and has been in practice since 1993. He is presently nominated member of the annual accounts review committee of the Karnataka State Cricket Association. He was uh, one of the member of the financial report review group of Bangalore 1 constituted under the banner of FRRB ICI New Delhi and he has got lot of other qualifications and achievements in his bag. I would seek his consent to make his introduction very brief and concerns. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please join me to welcome him because he has put a lot of effort to get an account to the credentials members and also arranging and coordinating to get the members here with us. Now I request uh, all of us to raise up for the motto song to start the program. Concern for most of the private companies whether IFC has to be done 
or not, our auditor has to look at it. Now, IFC for all the private companies with a turnover of less than 50 crore is not required to be done. So, no more IFC for all the companies. There have been certain, certain discussions going on because the notification is dated 13th June 2017, whether it's applicable to 16, 17 accounts or whether it's applicable to 17, 18 accounts and all that. But it's pretty clear that what they have done is that the particular reporting tariff under 143.3i has been not required for private companies. That means when you report, any audit report dated consequent to 13th of June 2016, uh, 2017, you don't have to have any clause on IFC. You may have done the IFC, but you don't have to report on that. If it all not done, there is no issue because you don't have to report at all on that. So that's how it has to be looked into. Though this is an amendment with retrospective, uh, with respect to a uh, sudden uh, notification which came on, a uh, sudden order which came on 15th of uh, June 2015. With respect to that, they have done, but this particular amendment is basically an insertion of an amendment. There are certain amendments of that particular notification are substituted. This is an insertion. Because of that an insertion, it will take effect only from 13th June 2017. So any audit reports signed on or after 13th June 2017, IFC is not applicable for private companies. The second major amendment which has come is that with respect to the rotation of an auditors, which came just a day before, that's yesterday it has came. Wherein all the private companies, you know, some of the private companies with certain a class of companies was called, we are supposed to have a rotation of auditors of 5 years with an independent auditor or a 10 years as a form of an auditor. That also has been done away with as far as the private companies are concerned with their turnover of 50 crores and less. Any company which has got a turnover of 50 crores and less did not have to have a rotation of auditors which otherwise would have been become effective because of a 3 years period was given. Effective AGM ending on 31st September 2017, such companies auditors should have been rotated. Now for all the private companies, the turnover of less than 50 crore, no more rotations required. There are other conditions also that 50 crores of borrowings and all the things, that condition continues. And I told with IFC, the other condition is that one is a 50 crore, they have used the word or uh, borrowing of 50 crores and uh, less. Uh, if such conditions are there, then it is not required. Since the word used is or, it leads to an interpretation. It should have been and. So now it is drafted in such a way that a company which has got 200 crores turnover but don't have a borrowing of less than 20 crore, if you go look at the interpretation, can still get, get away with the IFC. But intention is not that. Intention is avoiding the word and. Uh, turnover is less than 50 crore and borrowing is less than 20 crore. That should have been there. But as things stands today, the word uses or. I am very sure the amendment will come to that. This is the two of the latest. Very important amendment applicable to a private company. I am very welcome over the uh, NCA. So with that, I will not talk much on the NCIT because we are here to, uh, we come here to hear from the NCIT member himself as well as the experienced speaker. I would like you to uh, listen to them. It's a very good opportunity for a chart accounting to appear before the NCIT. So I'll just leave the floor to our uh, invitees. So thank you very much. Thank you, Prasad, for the overview of the program. Now I request uh, Honorable uh, Judicial Member NCLT, Ashri Ratakonda Murri, to talk about the brief note on the rules and regulations of NCLT, please. Good evening to all of you. Today I am very happy to spend some time with you. You all know basically I was in the judiciary and your profession and your branch. I can openly say is a new subject to me. What I was doing, I was uh, disposing of criminal cases, sentencing accused to the life imprisonment, where accused committed murder, or hearing the appeals, or disposing of the civil matters where property rights are involved. So we never come across the direct involvement of uh, the auditors, except in very few cases where there is a dispute with regard to the amount involved. Now, 
I assumed charge here as member judicial in June last year. And member technical is also there. The framers of the legislation has thought it fit that a bench to be presided by a judicial member as well as a technical member. Because matters coming before the tribunal involves the participation of a judge as well as a technical member. In the course of time, I feel that constitution of bench by two members, especially technical member having background of auditing, financing, etc., is of most helpful for giving a correct decision on any dispute where companies are involved. Now, you all know that, that uh, these amalgamation, merger, etc. were being exclusively done by the high courts. Now, the jurisdiction is taken away from the high court and he is now conferred on the tribunals. We have received so many cases from the High Court Karnataka, such as amalgamation cases and certain schemes, reduction of capital, etc. Company Secretary Gorgi. He also appeared in several matters before us. Now, your profession is an important profession in connection with the corporate sector. Of course, the strength of chartered accounts in India at present is not sufficient. What I read in articles, some articles, and India needs few more auditors. You see, the role of auditor is being increased, not confined to the, especially for auditing etc. Earlier, you are not able to appear either before the High Court, perhaps before the Tribunal, Company Law Board. Yes. Now, after advent of uh, Companies Act 2013, you are also authorized to appear before the Tribunal like an advocate. You can see the provision section 432. Just I will read for your guidance, for your information. 432.
right to legal representation. A party to any proceeding or appeal before the tribunal or the appellate tribunal. You can also appear before appellate tribunal at Delhi. Not uh, to the tribunal only. As the case may be, may either appear, may either appear in person or authorize one or more chartered accountants. So you can appear before the tribunal. You are entitled to appear. The next thing, NCIT started functioning from 1-6. We have just completed one year. We can say in a short span of one year with the resources available at our disposal we have considerably disposed of the matters. It would have been otherwise if these matters are before the earlier forum. No, because we are exclusively dealing with this subject, with these matters. Therefore, we can spare sufficient time. Now, the corporate sector needs quick settlement of the disputes for the progress of the industry. Now, they have compared the time being taken for disposal of the company matters in India with other foreign countries. What they observed in case of foreign countries like United States or Great Britain, for example, in a case of oppression and mismanagement, the time taken there when compared to India is far lower. So, people who want to invest in India are somehow reluctant, hesitating to invest for the reason that there will be some delay in respect of matters where corporate sector is involved before the regular course of law. So in that connection, it was thought fit to create a separate system to deal exclusively with cases arising from corporate sector. As a result, National Company Law Tribunal is started. This is the simple background. Now, I am given the subject with regard to the NCIT rules. These rules are framed subsequent to the establishment of the tribunal, not before that. After we assume charge and some days later, these rules have come into existence in July 2016. There are about 120 rules. 123 rules, roughly 120. I will touch only on important 
which is uh, uh, they are uh, you are concerned only with those rules. Other rules uh, they are not important for you as far as you are concerned. Rule six says authorized representative. These are the rules notified on 21st July 2016. Authorized representative means a person authorized in writing by a party to present his case before the tribunal as representative of such party and provided under section 432. If we go back to the 432, you are authorized to represent the party. So you are, you will be the authorized representative. So NCIT will permit you to appear on the, on behalf of either party, either party. Yes, you must be, you must know about the tribunal timings, very important. We have to strictly maintain these timings. Rule 8 says, the tribunal shall hold its sittings either at headquarters or at such other places falling within its territorial jurisdiction as it may consider convenient. Our principal bench is at Delhi. We are all benches. Bangalore NCLT is a bench. Principal bench will be at Delhi, which will be presided by the president. We are preside here two members are presiding the bench. There he is called president. We are called judicial member and criminal, I mean technical member. Sitting hours. Our tribunal shall ordinary the sitting hours of the tribunal shall be from 10.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. So we have to get down at 1 p.m. Again we have to go to the bench at 2 p.m and shall be there by till 4.30 p.m. These are our timings. So we are expected to be on the bench in these hours only. Working hours. This is bench hours. I am telling you about working hours, rule 9, rule 10. Yes. Working hours, I do rule 9. Working hours, Rule 10. Except on Saturdays, Sundays and national holidays, the office of the tribunal shall remain open on all working days from 9.30 to 6 p.m. So office will function. Office will function from 9.30 to 10.30 on all working days. Except on Saturdays, Sundays and, not, and national holidays. Suppose if you want to file any paper before the registry that is dealt by sub rule 2 the filing counter of the registry shall be open on all working days from 10.30 to 5.00 pm so you can file whatever paper you want to file like a petition etc you have to file only between 10.30 to 5.00 pm that too on all working days Suppose, if there is any urgent matter which you want to move, then it should be filed before 12 noon. Even if it is filed before 12 noon, it will be listed only on the next day. This will not, on the very same day we will not take up. Because the matter will be listed only on the next day that as per rule 30. 30.
So, part 3 deals with institution of proceedings, petition, appeals, etc. You can go through it. This are the part 3 also. You are concerned with part 3 also of the national company. Instead of reading, you can go through the provisions and act accordingly. Regarding what uh, the petition should contain, the address of the respondent or the parties, including the correct details of the address. In some cases, they are giving address as if uh, uh, he is a very, very prominent person and that he is a person known to the postal department. And uh, the notice has been returned and no purpose being served. Therefore, uh, the rules insist that uh, all details of the respondent, including his house address, number, street, including email address, everything, should be found. Therefore, it is easy for the uh, postal department also to serve notice on the party. That we are supposed to give to it twice the price of uh, order for notice, service of notice. It is being uh, causing a delay because we can't proceed uh, further unless notice is served on the consent party. One important aspect is not a single copy is one copy is not sufficient. Suppose if you want to move an application or petition, you have to file three sets. One is for me, one is for member and one for office. Because the tribunal is presided by two persons. So both have to look into the papers. Therefore, rule is meant that to three sets of copies. Not only on the petitioner side also, but also from the respondent side. Both sides to file. And we are asking them to now comply according to this rule. But in the case of I mean, judiciary, one copy, main copy, in case there are number of other side respondents or defendants over maybe, the, each one is entitled for one copy. Like that we are asking the judicial side. But here the only three copies is sufficient. Suppose if any document is in a language other than English, you can file, suppose it is in Kannada language, you can file that document. Provided it should be accompanied by English translation. That is also to be certified by the advocate or any translator. So English, all document must be in English. Suppose if it is in any vernacular language, English version is to be filed. And other provisions are there with regard to the evidence, service of notices, they are all not important. But if you can read the paper, only just limited 123 rules, you can read. They are available in the website also, ministry's website. Rights of a party to appear before the tribunal rule 45. Every party may appear before a tribunal in person or through an authorized representative, duly authorized in writing in this law. So, there must be an authorization. So far as advocate is concerned, vakalat nama is sufficient. Whereas in your case, you can file only memo of appearance, signed by party, that is sufficient. The authorized representative shall make an appearance through filing a of Vakalatnama. Vakalatnama is fully restricted to the advocate. Our memorandum of appearance in forum number NCLT 12, that is sufficient. So, we will take it into account that you are duly authorized by the party to appear for the party.
here registration of authorized representative of intern no intern employed by an authorized representative shall act as such before the tribunal or be permitted to have access to the record and obtain copies of the order you are only permitted but your representative is not permitted unless your representative is registered get it Suppose if a party doesn't appear, what would be the next course of action for the tribunal? He will be set ex parte in case respondent. If petitioner himself is not attending, he will dismiss it. Suppose if other side is absent, he will decide the matter ex parte on merits. That is provided in the rules. So we need not wait till the other party comes. It is for the other party to engage the counsel and uh, proceed with the matter. How long we can wait? We will give some chance also to the other side. Let the other side to utilize it. Otherwise, the tribunal is not powerless. We will treat the, the tribunal will declare him as ex parte and proceed with the matter. Is registration to be done with the tribunal or registration? Registration. Registration is the register to be maintained by the NCL. NCL. NCL is there. Intern is law. So there you have to get the, the intern to be registered. That is the, there in the Rule 46. Verify Rule 46. And you are also entitled for free copy of the certified copy of the final order. Only one copy. So if, you, if you want more copies, you have to pay and get certified copy. Required fee. In some cases, uh, the auditor will be appointed as uh, value as such. Uh, they are competent to be appointed. So the we will maintain some register also and uh, keep the names of the auditor that who can be appointed uh, for in case where the valuation is required with respect of company. That being done, uh, that can be done by you because you are uh, professionals. There are several other rules are there, no? please you can read those rules. I am only just bringing you to your notice, only important ones because of shortage of time. Generally, the registry is very particular about all these rules. Whenever difficult arises, then only it will be brought to our notice, then we have to interpret the rules. So our registry is uh, thoroughly aware of all these rules because they are going to check everything, no? whether the matter is in accordance with the rules or not. Section 140, 
rule uh, 179 is in respect of section 169. So you see the provisions under the Companies Act, where director's uh, role is there and where director and where the auditor's role is involved, where auditor is affected party, then what is the remedy available to him and how he has to proceed in these rules dealt with. And you have to also appear before the tribunal observing the dress code. There is a prescribed dress code for the auditor, sir. Yes, so you have to appear before the tribunal, not with plain clothes. According to the death code, prescribe it to you. That will be done. What is the code? What you have to know. <laughs> <laughs> no, what is your, uh, my dress code is prescribed. No, because we have to wear a coat, black coat, and a thigh or uh, that uh, bag. But, but the institute has prescribed it, no? code also for us. So whether that can be applicable enough for the tribunal also. You can say. But company secretaries are coming in, in that dress. Yeah, it is already stupid. If the sales must have been prescribed to you also. So that is compulsory even the NCA not only these rules, but there is direction from NCA to Delhi also that Dress code to be applied. Uh, yes, rule 124, you see. Professional dress for the authorized representatives. While appearing before the tribunal, the authorized representatives shall wear the same professional dress, dress as prescribed in their code of conduct. <laughs> Not prescribed, huh? <laughs> No, it is to be clarified by my number. <laughs> no, I believe there is a dress code. Because, yes, hmm? it is prescribed. Because you are a separate entity. So, so far as the rules are concerned, this is the brief note. But you can easily read it because plain, everything is plain on paper. And just to follow in the note. Huh? Just to, I have one article only just to find it I speak with regard to CA. CA, these two letters are pioneer and is a mark of trust, integrity and independence. These two words. CA. In the growth of the country, CAs play an important role. CAs are the managers of financial recourse of the country. Many CAs are working in service industry and many are doing their own business. This article raises you, your role in the development of some country and how utmost integrity is required. You are auditing the accounts of the company. We are mostly depending upon your certificate, your report concerning the financial position of the company. Now it is made clear under the provisions of section 230 that CA has to give certificate about accounting standards in respect of the scheme or nature etc. That is there. Without your certificate this scheme is valueless and criminal cannot act upon. So, it is your duty to see 
how this scheme is formulated and it is based on accounting standards as prescribed under section 133. So tribunal is largely depending upon the auditors. Say you. Thank you for giving this. Thank you so much, sir, uh, for the wonderful uh, speech. Uh, now I, I request uh, C. Ashok Kumar Mishra, the Honorable Member Technical in NCLT, to touch upon the aspects related to the matters dealt by the NCLT and the companies that. Over to you, sir. Namaskar. Good evening to all my colleagues here and my Honorable Member and Secretary and Mr. Gorke and Mr. Ravi. I can tell you it is a great opportunity that my own institute to which I am a member have invited me. I have attended, no doubt, I have also delivered earlier on certain subjects when uh, I have just I am missing his name when he was the president of the institute. Because he desired, I, I was the director of finance of HL, he desired me why not to have a CPE study circle there in HL. So at that time I was very much involved. My colleagues are here, Vijay Kumar, Agrawal and Parmesh Kumar. So they will explain you in detail. Let me today tell you, I don't know they have marked 25 minutes for me. But I think my birthday is also getting late, so I will try to manage within 20 minutes. First thing is there, let me tell you as a chartered accountant, generally we are not very much enthusiastic in going to a different field. Because we always feel satisfied with finance nowadays, when you become CEO, it is a great thing. But generally, and that data is also very low. Uh, but I can tell you there are fields. Like legal field, I was never knowing that it is such an interesting field. I am personally thankful to Mr. Murli, who generations are involved in the legal profession. And he is very much confident on the law. Like chartered accountants, we will be always conservative how to deal with different situations. But he is a great, uh, because of him, I am uh, very comfortable in dealing with the issue. But let me today tell you, as a chartered accountant, are we, I am finding, even in the practice, because now we have completed one year, I don't find more than two or three chartered accountants appearing for any of the cases. Um, I can tell you in the absence of uh, Gorge that uh, company secretaries are coming still in some numbers. Advocates as it was their professions, it is, they are coming. But let me today tell you as a chartered accountant or going to become a chartered accountant, there is a great market, great potential for you in this NCLT. Why? All are much, much lucrative profession. I don't know whether I can speak like that or not, but I am just telling you, because you see all the cases of compromise, arrangement, amalgamation, merger, reduction of capital, all these are, in my opinion, for a chartered accountant to handle is very, very easy. Because you know, there are let on formats are there, you know what you have to write in that. What is the logic for selecting? What is the logic basically for selecting or for going for an amalgamation, merger, demerger, compromise or arrangement? You can write the fact, you can present the fact in a better way than any other professional. Since I have got the touch with all the three professors, I can, all, all four professors now, I can tell you with certainty, you can do better. 
But the difficulty is, we are not touching still this field. Still, I can tell you, take small examples. Like, if, a, if you are a foreign holding or you are a subsidiary company or a holding company, your foreign, uh, your subsidiary or holding is outside India. Now in that case, if you have to frame a financial year change, section 2, subsection 41, it is very easy thing for any chartered accountant to draft a plan, to give a fit fit, to have a memorandum of appearance. These are very normal things. Pay some stipulated fees of 1,000 rupees, somewhere it is 5,000. So there is nothing. You can write it better than anybody else. Secondly, you take the example of any case, compounding. Compounding cases are there. What is compounding? You could not convene your annual general meeting within the due time. What is in that? You have to make a plan, write the name of the company, registered office of the company, authorized capital, paid up capital, object clause of the company, what is the uh, fact about the case. You Can anybody write better than you? What is compounding? Why AGM could not be held? Either courtesy to our own profession, our audit could not complete in time, or accounts preparation was not done in time, or there was a fight among directors, or some of the directors were outside. These are the reasons that you have to record in the fact and concluding paragraph you need compounding because of these provisions and pass to table orders. There is no difficulty. And within, I think within three to four hearing, your case will get closed, you will get a hefty fees also. <laughs> So, you have to select, let me tell you, as a chartered accountant, I myself was feeling, I was not very much sure how in a legal profession uh, I will be able to perform. Because we always think, we go in so much detail, that is the first criteria of a chartered accountant, he will always go through the full detail. Nowadays, let me today tell you, when I have to handle in a day, along with our judicial member Murli Sahab, suppose even in one day there are 75 cases were listed. And see we have to complete say 1035, 1035, 1040 or 1030 we have to start. And then uh, 1, 130 you have to close again, 2, 230 you have to start, you have to close by 5 o'clock, you have to complete or maximum 535, 45, 6 o'clock your government office stops are there. Now how we will complete 75 cases? If we start reading all pages in the code, it is not possible. You have to scan the thing and see which is important for you, which you want to know. Basically, in compromise, arrangement, merger, demerger, amalgamation, what we have to see, basically. We have to see whether all the compliances of rules which our Murli Sahib has just now told you, some of the provisions he has told you, you have to just see whether all the provisions which is, all the requirements which are mentioned in section 230 or 232 in the second or final stage, have you complied with that or not? This started accountant certificate on accounting standard or compliance of accounting, your balance sheet filed or not, article memorandum filed or not, uh, our company latest audited accounts filed or not because it should be six months uh, old only, not more than six months. So certain things, the registrar of company report has come or not, official liquidator has submitted its report or not, what are the observations in the report, whether the petitioner has clarified on those reports or not. These are the things you have to scan in how many minutes? You divide the timing, even if you consider eight hours, 480 minutes, you have to find out 75 cases. Can you give even 10 minutes time? No. How you have to do? In that period, I have just, uh, I can tell you in last uh, uh, 13, I will not take a specific day, but in last 13 days we have to, we have uh, listed 436 cases. Now you see, so this type of things, all my colleagues and youngsters will have also to know and learn. And if you learn, this is one of the most paying profession I can tell you, most respectable profession I can tell you, because I can, the area, I have, I have also made an analysis of a 
I, off the record I can tell you I have made an analysis of say last 10, 15 days. Because when Madam Gita in her absence I am telling you, I just when she has proposed that we have to deliver something, then I started jotting down some point, how many days which sections cases are coming up. I have found personally 33% cases are of merger, amalgamation, demerger, compromise, arrangement. If you want me to explain, I can explain all those terminology also. Hope all of you are aware about it. Reduction of capital, all these things are there 33%. 24% are cases of uh, basically relating to your compounding cases. So this is this itself is constituting how much? 57 percent. 15 percent cases are there. 241 type. So many cases are there. 241 or related transfer of shares or like that. It will be 15 percent. So basically 72 72 percent of the cases are like that, in which you can actively participate, perform better, earn better. So this is a, and with respect, great respect, you have not to go and sit in like a income tax office, I found my colleagues are sitting outside like that. Here there is a respectable office, respectable professionals, chamber is there, you can sit comfortably with due respect. So this is a, NCLT is a good opening for the chartered accountants. But even for the, come to the provision of insolvency and bankruptcy code. Earlier that was winding up by BIFR whatever. Now in insolvency and bankruptcy code, who can, who are filing the cases? That is further lucrative for you. Who are filing? Operational creditor. Who is who are operational creditor? To whom from whom you have uh, so who has supplied the material to the company? Now these operational creditors, if they are not getting the money as per the terms and conditions of purchase order, what he has to do? He has to give, same thing as a lawyer he will give you, uh, the professional he will give you a case. You have to issue a demand notice on that person that you are not paying, me, on that company that you are not paying my amount. You have to wait, although at says 10 days, I will tell you to wait 15 days. So that all timing, clear days, this day, that day, problem will not be there. 15 days if he responds to you, it's okay. If he does not respond, you can file a case in NCLT. Operational creditor may be the employee also provided his case is settled. He is also there. So, in that case, what you have to do? You have to file form number 5. Then in that form number 5, if you suggest the name of IRP, Insolvency Resolution Professional, you can get that person, that professional, uh, from uh, IBBI, that is Insolvency and Bankruptcy Board of India website, who are all there available in Bangalore, you can suggest their name. They can also be... And they are also, you can be there. My Murli Sahib is proved to you. He is telling you, there also you can come as an Insolvency Professional. Yes. I am telling about the filing of the case. Now, you have a very good opening on that. Because you will file the case, we will hear two days, we will issue notice to them. Although it is optional, if they have accepted your demand, demand is firmed up, then we can appoint IRP if they are not paying you. Or if our, we will issue a notice, either you will come in the terminal, you will have a, you will have a, there after that fellow himself will be interested in negotiating and getting the issue settled. Because otherwise IRP or insolvency resolution professional will take over the company, like Mr. Gorge has also taken over one of the company. He will supersede all the directors, he will have a full authority in that. He has to manage. He has to manage the company as a CMD. CMD. <laughs> <laughs> Not CMD. So, <laughs> he has a lot of power. Why I am telling you? You can be insolvency professional also. Similarly, if you are a corporate applicant, say you are working in a company, want to file a petition, you can file a, uh, a petition in form number 6. If you are a financial creditor, you are in a bank, working bank is giving this job, then you have to file in form number one. These are very simple formats. It is not complicated now. And 
If you do two cases, I hope uh, you will generate a better income than what I uh, direct finance and myself was getting in one of the highest salary bracket. So, my suggestion to you will be that is a very lucrative area and please think coolly. This is an area, tell your colleagues also. Just go through the rules which our uh, Murli Sahara just now told you. It is not a very complicated rule. And not understanding anything content anywhere is about normal rules, so you will have to comply. I was also today glancing when I was about to come. I saw that insolvency and generally in all the law the definition is in section 2. But insolvency and bankruptcy code it is in section 3, 5, like that. So nowadays uh, pattern is also getting changed. So perhaps we have to set right up our memory in that way. Otherwise, whenever I used to appear for any interview, I was remembering the reason which be always in every section. <laughs> so this is the profession and this is a very lovely profession. I can tell you of working with our judicial member. Here you have in very high regards and respect. Okay. Sometimes advocates, professionals will fight with you, but on a ground, on a point of merit, they will fight among themselves. But in the bargain, suppose even if you hear something, this is a very honorable profession. Then I can also tell you that if you feel that you want to go for a practice in this field, initially one two case, you can work with some through some advocate also. They will initially, you should have a basic understanding how to present your case. Although Mr. Murli Saab is very comfortable when any chartered accountant or company secretary is appearing. He is very polite with them, so that let him to come out properly. Because advocates uh, know all these things because they are already appearing in honorable high court, so they know how to present the case. Weak case, uh, strong case, both they present nicely. So, these things are there, this bench is there and your chairman and our member judicial hail from the same district of Andhra. That is another advantage to all of you. So, my present suggestion is like that, that I was told by our Sai Shiva Ram that basically I must tell to you and generate your curiosity to appear before NCLT. In any NCLT, not only here, when in Bombay, Bombay is there, Delhi is there, you can appear anywhere. And it is not where Chennai is there, and it is not a very difficult act or very difficult provision. Now, if you have some questions, you can ask me. Otherwise, I will tell you in two, three minutes some of the crux. If any one of you have anything, if I know, I will answer it. If I don't know, I will tell you frankly, I don't know. <laughs> so if you are not asking me, I will tell to my fellow colleagues, in IBC code also, those who are in, interested in becoming insolvency professionals, they have to pass certain exam. That is not a very, very high or difficult exam like CA. It is a normal type, but only because I know CAs are very hardy. So you can pass the exam very easily. Insolvency professional, and initially you may be given a small company, but the time is not far off. When you will gain good experience, you may become, uh, virtually you will revive the so many companies. Because this insolvency and uh, professionals, IRP, has to submit a scheme of revival. If you are not in a position, then only you have to suggest for liquidation. Time period is there. It is not there that you have to run after that company for months or years together. In 180 days, you have to sort out the whole issue. You will have to work backward. So, my suggestions are particularly to all of you, that uh, particularly to youngsters, that kindly think of. You see Arundhati Bhattacharya, she is a lady, she is the chairman of a, I think one of the bank, 50 banks of the world, at the world level. That ICICI bank, Madam Kocher, 
he is also a lady. So it is better in our profession also. Lot of you can do lot of good things. And let me tell you, in company secretary uh, profession, whenever uh, friends in other this thing, ladies also are coming. They are presenting very nicely. Why not any one of you can? Don't fear. There is nothing. Whatever way you want to present, suppose you may not say my Lord, but you start with sir. Don't worry. In the life, I was also feeling very difficult initially because I was not in the practice of uh, this profession, core profession. So these are the learnings which we can do, and uh, at the end I can tell you one thing: ki the way the country is moving. Income tax is going to be very easy thing. The professional outlook in income tax will also go down in course of time. There may or may not be much opportunity. GST is a new act coming up. We don't know what type of complication immediately will come. So this NCLT for our professionals, it is a very very good opportunity. Kindly in cash. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, C. Ashok Kumar Mishra, for the very inspiring and motivational speech for the Chartered Accountants present here. Um, sir, now, uh, actually, I would like to mention one or two words there, you know, uh, the draft rules of insolvency and the valuation and value rules, no? that has been vetted by the Bangalore branch uh, with the evident prospectus, where we have the suggestions for the improvement and changes in there. And most of the time, you know, uh, any new policy or law regulation comes in. Normally, it comes to the institute uh, for a recommendation from our side. So we are given the recommendation recently. I uh, know I request uh, CS Tirupal Gorge to talk about the practical aspects from uh, as, as a company secretary. I you know we are appearing before the NCLT. Uh, would like to hear you, sir. Sir, yeah, no, we'll take what? you. Thank uh, I would like to take this opportunity to thank both the uh, members of NCLT, uh, Sri uh, Rote Kunda Murli. I wholeheartedly thank you for accepting our interest in coming here and addressing our members. And now I expect uh, uh, CA Nityananda, the uh, Part Central Council member, to come forward and present a memento to Rote Kunda Murli.
So I will briefly touch upon the almost all provisions of Companies Act so that you can be, you know, follow with me. See, these are the sections that we need to keep in mind uh, while we are going to practice in CLT. Section 4062, 434 and then 441 of the Companies Act 2013. Then you have National Company Law Tribunal Rules 2016 as amended. Then National Company Law Appellate Tribunal Rules 2016. See, this is how the, the enforcement under the Companies Act as of now stands. Towards your you know, left, this is a civil jurisdiction. Towards your right is a criminal jurisdiction. This civil jurisdiction, that's what 432, where uh, representative like CACS, CWA can appear, the excluding that yellow color, I put the yellow color, like the Supreme Court, excluding that forum, now we are authorized to appear almost all forums that are there. I, I have briefly you know, figured out what are the sections. Now the <coughs> adjudication, there is a condonation and there is a you know like a civil dispute and apart from that schemes, arrangements, there are various matters. I will show you a list of later. Around 47 matters or dealt by the NCLT. Around at least I can say equivalent number are dealt by the even regional director and ROC as well. Uh, I will give you one uh, matter how ROC apart from regular, you see I am not worried about, I am not telling about the, the regular ROC function being a ROC. The ROC will register any document that you file apart from registration of company. Of course, now registration of company is done at centrally, central level. Apart from that, there is a one provision of you know, Companies Act wherein ROC has a power to adjudicate matters. It is a new provision, five provision in the new Companies Act wherein ROC itself has a power to adjudicate the you know, uh, fines. In the Companies Act, there are various terms used. One term, like a fee, filing fee, then you have additional fees, there is a, a provision called fine, then you have another term called penalty, then you have another term called compounding fees, then another term called cost. In the Companies Act, Wherever the word penalty is there, the penalties are adjudicated by the ROC. They, they given clear cut demarcation how the adjudication takes place. Either you are or the ROC after serving a notice for finding some section which contains the penalty. Example section 42, like a private placement. This particular section doesn't come under the compounding. It uses the word penalty. So ROC has a power to levy the penalty apart from the civil criminal jurisdiction under 42. In the 42, there is a criminal jurisdiction as well. This imprisonment is there. Leaving that imprisonment, ROC can do the adjudication of the penalty and he can levy the penalty up to 2 crores in case of section 42 or the 3 times of the money that is involved as a private placement money. This is the genesis of the Sahara cases. So like that, suppose you are agreed by the order of the ROC, being a company, being a director, whoever it is, then appeal will be uh, preferred can be prepared before the reason direct. And some of the cases where ROC has a power, an uh, example, you are going for a uh, mergers. 
In merger, there is a new process uh, called small companies merger or merger between the holding and the net percent subsidiaries. Wherein regional director has a power now. Two, you don't need to go to the ICO, you don't need to go to the NCRT, and ROS, ROC gives his report, OL gives his report to the regional director, and regional director passes an order as an ICO, similar to the ICO order, and if you are agreed with that order of the RD, then you can go to NCRT. Oh, sorry, NCLA, tribunal. NCLA, appellate tribunal, not with the NCLT. Similarly, suppose removal of uh, directors, removal of auditors, and there is one section, central government can remove the auditor. In all the cases, you can prepare the appeal. First appeal, if it is done by the ROC, first appeal will go to regional director, and after that the appeal will come to the NCLT, then NCLT, then it will go to Supreme Court. So in all the situations, we being otherwise representative either for the company or for the directors, we can represent our case and then you don't need to have the, you know, the lawyer degree, whatever it is, is not required. So this is the civil, see you have not, hell lot of, you know, provisions are allowing us to go under the company's hand uh, for the listed, then you have a SEBI and SAT and Supreme Court, it will go like that. And if you see the now recently that in the new company sector, is again new provision. I am not giving the section number. Mediation and conciliation process. This is there, especially the oppression mismanagement cases. If they want to find any via media, plenty of you know opportunities are there. Now government, central government has opened the you know panel, impanelment. And at least I think in Bangalore around the three or four company secretaries and some senior chartered accountant have enrolled. And you can act as a mediator or a counselor, whatever it is, so that the dispute will be settled out of court, not even before the NCLT, whatever it is. In the cases, if you are a mediator, you don't need to go for the cases. NCLT, NCLT will refer the matter, or ROC will refer the matter, or RT also will refer the matter. You have seen a lot of dispute reaching to the ROC, reaching to the regional director, reaching to the NCLD. In all the situations, for amicable settlement, being a professional like chartered accountant, you know, you better weigh the how to figures, what is the value. See, the old dispute is there with respect to the share and share valuation. And then what is their percentage? Or the throwing down from the shares, like share transfers, or throwing in from the director's share. Are not allowing or not giving the notice, all those things are there. This we, being an expert in the company law matters, I think we can play a better role. So, the, the role of the company secretary and chartered accountant and cast accountant being in practice, you know, enhanced by the 2013 Companies Act. So that's what the bench, uh, you know, honorable members were telling. So, this is the chart, this will give you what exactly where you can fit based on your experience and expertise, based on your caliber in the subject, and also the client that you are getting. See, my submission is here. In Bangalore, you have around more than 80,000 or 90,000 companies are there. And uh, in terms of company secretaries, a very less number is there. Around six to 700 practicing company secretaries are there. And they can't cope up these kind of, you know, uh, big uh, assignments. So you can also develop simultaneously a separate wing for your, your own office rather giving to the you know, other like employees and all. That is the, my idea is that. And if you need any support from us company secretaries, we are there and we can reciprocate. You know, the exchange of ideas, views, experiences will certainly enrich each one of us. So, that and coming to this criminal matter towards the right side, there we cannot appear. Like right wing special courts, high court and supreme court, then you have a Metropolitan Magistrate and Judicial Magistrate, then again High Court, Supreme Court, SFO, Investigation, so many things are there. So the towards my right, that we cannot appear, towards my left, at least 10 to 15 forums you can appear as a representative for your company, uh, where you are, even uh, practicing professional can appear, even employee chartered secretary, chartered, uh, chartered accountant, or employee company secretary also appear on behalf of the company. It is, if you look at the authorization, it never said that practicing. The word practicing is missing. 
in the authorization. So if you are there with employment, you can also represent your company. Then see, the, this honorable uh, judiciary said that uh, when uh, chartered accountant and company secretaries are appearing before them, they are so you know, generous and guiding us. The reason is simple here. Yeah. See the court, there is a huge difference. You already know that income tax tribunals and other tax tribunals, SAT, so many things are there. The NCIT is not a new thing when compared to that. So it is something. The court generally it goes for the judicial, you know, complete judicial institution it is, whereas this is a quasi judicial. Generally they don't look at the, you know, detailed process, detailed documentation, will not be there. The entire tribunal goes on the facts of the case. They will not dig out the, much into the, you know, legal team and find out, you know, loopholes and all. Parties also will never try into the, getting into the detail into the law, law position. They will look at the facts. Generally, they will examine one company. Board meetings are not conducted for five years. And one director, he claimed that. The tribunal will not go immediately for non-compliance of the provisions of company act against the other party. It will not get into that provision. That it will try to focus to resolve the dispute, which is the fact. So that is a judicial. And uh, court, of course, you know the civil matters and uh, criminal matters it will handle. But in tribunal, it handles only the civil matters which are interested. See, the tribunal, this is created under the NCLT, in the Companies Act, is not something like, you know, it has over, overall jurisdiction under the Companies Act. No. There are around 40, 45 situations, they have till they are interested, the tribunal has a power to take up the matters. So, which are interested through the provision, specific interestment should be there, then the tribunal will work for that. Of course, the independent is there, open for public, then appealability is there, both if you agree then you can go for appeal. Then strictly, if you go to the court, the court you should be very strict in terms of the wearing dress, in terms of the paper, preparation, everything. Whereas if you come to the tribunal, there is an informal way of discussion. Maybe if you look at the HCLT tribunal, it looks like a court only, but still good judge will have a lot of informal discussion with you. You can just say that this is my problem. See, Last week I was there, I was not able, they gave me one particular date. Say, sir, uh, that day I am not is there, please give me a free date or post date. Same thing. You know, they are very cooperative because the, the manner is, you know, informal manner they work for that. They give that date. And only lawyer can appear before the court and uh, here as uh, already judiciary member told that CSCS, CW also can appear. Then judiciary, again the only specified matters tribunal has got. And then compared to the expenses, you know, if you go to the court, it will go to the year on year, just you know, passing, dragging, all those things. And I don't know how the client will pay for the lawyer and all. Because uh, as per my understanding, it is a corporate world. Corporate should respect two things. One is the time, other one is the money. If we, two things are not able to respect, there is no fun in doing the corporate business. Because the, for you is a both are exchangeable, time and money. And if you go to the regular court, then it will go, you know, years together, you know that. One of winding up cases, I know, the past 50 years it is on. And liquidator started paying you dividend also, based on the interest that is being earned from the fixed deposits. 50 years. But in HCLT process, like IBC court, insolvency bankruptcy court, there is a very time-bound manner. And professionals can understand. So professionals are authorized to express the you know what is happened and you know you can take up to the next level. So less expensive, but less expensive to your client. As uh, both the judge are encouraged as being a, uh, you know chartered accountant and all, it is more remunerated to us. Less expensive, more remunerated. The reason is that you can quickly dispose it of the case. So the market would be there, market is all market driven. The, if, suppose some particular uh, professional is more effective in getting the orders quickly and also uh, dispersing where justice happened, then he will be paid and more respected. So that's why it is more expensive, uh, more less expense to the client in terms of the legal cost, but in terms of bars, no, it is more remunerative. 
See, this is the basic idea why they have come to the tribunal. They want to have the single window. See, earlier the merger was uh, uh, merger powers, merging of various powers. One is the CRB was there, then BIFR was there, civil court was there, high court was there, dealing with civil matters. Now all civil matters put into a single window called NCRT. And class action suit is the first time in India they are recognized. You know, the class action suit that means uh, investors can come together and file a complaint against the company, against the event value or consultant, RTA. So this case earlier used to be before the court, now any investor can file before the NCRT. Then of course greater field impact. So now as uh, judge was telling that uh, there are 11 benches as of now in India, but as our own uh, Shivakumar has told, Shivaram has told that they are going to have a very straight one bench, so that the bench can take the load of the all, in Karnataka around we have company with 80,000 and we have a NCL to one bench. CD disposal I already told, well balanced for. Well balanced forum as a judiciary and technical member both have told very clearly that uh, our member Charada Kondand used to help to understand the provision, especially companies act, the way that is supposed to be understood. And used to explain to the judiciary and judiciary even though altogether new field he has come from but he is able to dispose it of. Compared to other benches across India, I think Bangalore is the you know, largest disposal bench for last one year, one and a half year. So that way it is, a, it is well balanced. So technical expert is available with them and you have a judiciary to give the natural justice. Then of course, experts are out of here. I will tell you the wavelength between the uh, technical member and the wavelength between the charata content and company security caster content matches. You know that? So we are equally qualified. And you can express the same way that is there in the provision. He can also understand, he can convey the same to the judicial mem member judicial and it will happen. You know, the disposal will happen quickly. But it is lacking in the regular court system for the corporate law practices. But today it is available. So we should ourselves, you know, push into this kind of practices and make the business to run smoothly. This is uh, already, they have also discussed uh, what is the serial feature, the quasi judicial. I have already told, I think this is not a said, it is a repetition. Then, this is the, uh, or uh, you know, the secretary has already informed that uh, this is a very old uh, uh, concept. Uh, it was uh, first amended in the year 2002 as an amendment to the 1956 Act, bringing the a tribunal concept that. The, that time they emphasized the transfer of high court and CLB matters. But Metras Bar, you know, association, they filed a case against that. Uh, the very reason is that the old tribunal concept was there. It was completely equipped with the uh, technical members, not having member judicial. So Bar, Bar Council said very clearly when you are wholesale transferring the you know jurisdiction of high court to a, a technical then they say that where is the justice how you are going to provide a justice so then they opposed it and it went to the uh, high court of madras high court of madras says that it is unconstitutional particular uh, you know provision the consist of the tribunal under everything is unconstitutional then it went to supreme court believe or not that case it went till 2010 and disposed. Because of 2010, the 2002 amendment bill did not see the light of the day. It was there in the bill form, bill means act form only, not enforced without giving any date. So then, then the Supreme Court has recommended certain changes to the constitution of the committee and also the selection committee for the judiciary and also technical members. And based on that, the JJ Rani committee created a or suggested a new provision altogether in 2013 uh, Companies Act as per suggestions of the Supreme Court. And again, there was a selection process in the 2013 Amendment Bill wherein the bureaucrats were there in the selection process. In the, one of the bureaucrats process was there. 
Then again, Madras Bar Council, uh, Bar Association again filed a writ jurisdiction under the provision. Though the provision came into force 12th night 2013, they filed a case before them saying that it is again the back door entry you are trying to put the judicial uh, means uh, bureaucrats member or like secretary and all into the system. So please, then Supreme Court says that except that particular proviso, you can balance provisions are effective, that they put the unconstitutional, that particular selection process. Then, then based on the Supreme Court inputs in the year 2015, around two years back, and uh, this NCLT came into force 1st June 2016. So this is the you know situation, uh, how the tribunal came into picture. Of course, the uh, tribunal consists of the uh, president, judicial and technical members. That is the principal bench. And they have 11 benches across India, various states, where in all benches, one technical member, one judicial will be there. Judicial uh, member view will prevail. When it comes to the you know uh, opinion, then his view is will prevail. Of course, both will concur it. And if there is a difference of opinion, they should write it in writing and dispose the case down. And there is a tie again. If they are not able to concur, then the president will refer to the some other larger bench, uh, wherein the judicial members are more. And then it will be decided by the, again the odd and even number. So that is the situation. And the technical member, to become a technical member, I think uh, I will give in the next slide. But President to become a president of NCLT should be uh, uh, judged with five years of minimum experience. Then this is the you know how the composition will come. Uh, one is the judicial member, wherein the, you have a high court judge, district judge with five years experience, then advocate with ten years experience. Another side technical member. Now we have seen the Mr. Rath Sri Rathapanda Murli is a judicial because he was a uh, district judge more than five years and then you have seen the other uh, extreme member of our CI institute uh, and he was having more than 15 years experience so he become a technical member so that uh, asterisk more I put no it is like a joint secretary level this particular uh, qualification was struck down by the Supreme Court they said no you can't make them as a expert or technical member into this uh, forum. Then balance of course uh, personal specified knowledge 15 years and then presiding officer of labor court for 5 years experience and then tribunal under the industrial dispute act any member of the tribunal having 5 years experience also can be considered only technical members. This is the constitution suggested by the Supreme Court while disposing the case in the year 2010. Now I told already 11, 11 uh, members are there. See the as far as the tribunal is concerned, they have not put any restriction how many members it may consist technical or judicial. But as far as the appellate, they access that not exceeding 11 members. Because tribunal is supposed to you know have a benches across India. So based on the demand they can have number. In the old act it was decided around 63 members, but the new act you don't need to put any condition, let them have more number of people to cater the needs. And then for the tribunal, it is considered to be president, that the head of the tribunal is the president and the appellate tribunal, head of the tribu appellate tribunal is considered to be the chairperson. The tribunal is the use the chairperson. To become a chairperson of appellate tribunal, it should be a, a judge of Supreme Court or chief justice of any high court. This is again I told, it is appellate tribunal how it works, judicial member and technical member, not exceeding. Here to become a technical member, they are looking 25 years of experience, they are not looking CS, CS, CWA, no. They, they want to have a person with this uh, proven ability, integrity, etc. not less than 15 years experience in the law, finance, industry, management and administration or industrial reconstruction, so many things are, it is a very wide open. But he, the person has to prove that he can be, is a fit to become a, a technical member. There is a selection process, some exam will be conducted to be a member of the appellate tribunal. So this I already have informed that 
see the general power. See, the, these are the general powers uh, wide open. I told you, no? compared to the CLB, company law board was having you know limited powers to dispose of cases. Even BAMR was limited to the SICA cases, not all the cases. But today, I will show you the chart right now. At least you can get some idea how many cases. and closure of the Section 8 companies, then conversion of public to private company, and then matters relating to the prospectors, written of allotment, deduction, all those things, uh, in case of a unlisted company. Listed company, SAT is there. And then coming to the variation of shares, of uh, no, rights of shareholder. Suppose you have two class of shares, and if you want to change in between, and you, that, for that you need to have three-fourth majority from the each and every interested shareholder, interested class of shareholder. And if you are not able to get the interest, then it should be confirmed by the tribunal. And unable to redeem the redeemable preference shares, then you have a uh, transfer and transmission, like a re refusal of transfer in case of a private limited, even public limited company. So one can go to the tribunal, agreed party can go to the tribunal. And even, um, uh, next, the rectification of each staff members. Uh, example, you have filed a pass 3 for written up allotment with the wrong entries. And you already entered into the registrar of members. How to rectify that? So, company can approach the tribunal under this section and the tribunal will uh, give you appropriate direction to the ROC to remove the form that is there in the registry, the registry and uh, accordingly you can nullify and file a new form. That is the registrar members. Then there are other scope other. Suppose someone has transferred your share illegally. That is again that requires again the register of members rectification. So that are situations are there you can go ahead. And then you have the rectification of risk, consolidation of face value to eliminate the minority shareholder. Like Cadbury and other big companies, what they did to eliminate the 10 rupee shareholder holding 2 2 shares, what they did, they have consolidated the face value from 10 rupees to 1000 rupees. And if you consolidate per share value to 1000 rupees, the person who is holding less than, uh, example, uh, uh, 100 shares, you will not get any share. Like that, many schemes were floated uh, uh, to get away, and they, what they will do, they will cancel all these uh, hard lot shares, and they will put a trust, and money will be transferred to that, and the capital will be reduced automatically. So there now, if you are doing such consolidation where you are trying to eliminate the minority shareholder and that minority shareholder being an agreed party or even company itself, suppose you are passing such a resolution by the shareholder, that resolution is subject to the approval of the tribunal now. Then you have the conversion of a, a loan into loan or uh, debenture into rising from the government into equity. Then reduction of share capital that Alexa has spoken and then debenture asset security, sufficient security. There is a one provision, uh, 71 talk, talks about the issue of debentures. And if you have created insecurity, it means the value of the security for the debenture is less. And uh, if there is a dispute, uh, the person can go to tribunal and get it, uh, you know, properly secured by the tribunal. And then you have a re repayment of deposits. Repayment of deposits, suppose, uh, you are accepted being a public or private or eligible company and uh, after three years you have to repay. You are not repaying then the person deposit holder can approach the NCLT to compel the company to repay it. And then this is the section 74 for the deposits accepted prior to the um, 1st April 2014. They are given time, uh, they are given time up to next year and those cases, this is the transition provision only. So, if they are not able to pay it, they were supposed to go to the NCLT to get the permission. 
then company pays to pay the deposit this is again um, it is a 73 and 75 are the similar jurisdiction then again 97 98 to call an agm suppose company is not conducting agm a shareholder can approach the ncl can conduct the agm it is the responsibility of the board but they are not doing a shareholder there is no requirement, I think some 10% something is there. If you are at 10% shares in the company, you can approve the NCLT and the NCLT will direct you to conduct, not the company. So that is the one provision in there. Then you have the uh, provision, direction to inspection of minutes book. Suppose the um, shareholder is entitled to inspect the minutes of the general meeting. And if shareholder is not provided, shareholder can go to the NCLT and get the permission. And then you have the, uh, that is a, this, this is very unique provision, section 125, uh, under this 125 government creates the, uh, uh, what is that, investor education fund. Once you are not able to pay the 7 years unclaimed dividend is there, it should be transferred to the IEB fund. And I have told that class action suits, suppose someone has initiated the case against the company and he has incurred the money and huge money is there, small small shareholder. The cost of the legal process can be reimbursed from this fund in tribunal passes an order. This is the uniqueness. So any shareholder or a person who has approached to the class action suit or he has incurred the money, that money with the tribunal permission will be reimbursed to the person from the investor education fund. Then you know this under the 30, uh, this is about the reopening of accounts. Uh, you can't do. In general, you are not supposed to do it. There is a process is there, how long you can go on. But if you look at the section 130 of the Companies Act, if there is a fraud and then there is a mismanagement, in these two situations, company or any person, with the tribunal permission, they can reopen it to rectify the frauds. Like that, see, so many provisions are there. Why don't you think that, are the subject new to us? Do you think the auditor is not required to know the Companies Act while doing the audit? Have you seen, you must have seen this, uh, you know, latest uh, auditor report for the 15 hours. In the entire audit report, the word they have used, complied, complied, complied. The entire the audit report now reads as a compliant, 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 compliant. So compliant is the spirit and the letter. Wherever we are auditing, whatever it is the provision, example, there are no related party transactions, section 185 or 188. We are supposed to look into that. And those provisions only we are going to the NCLT. We are master in that way. Very good. We are master in that area and all the numbers we know, we know the law also. So that way, I suggest you, we, we need to venture it. It is a good as that, you know, it is very, you know, remunerative. It is going to pay us. So like that, sir, I will tell you only one section, the majority of that is around, uh, that uh, technical member was telling around, uh, around 30 percent, around 28 to 30 percent is the uh, oppression mismanagement where if you go to the NCLT bed, where the lawyers are paid. Only 28 percent, only under one section, that is section 241 to 244. But all other areas I have seen, either chartered coordinator, company secretaries are alone appearing. Alone are appearing, apart from the IBC cases. So we have a you know, very good chance to appear and you don't need to travel, like even if you go to regional director of role, you should go to Ayurveda. But at least here it is next door only. We can certainly venture into the, this new area and then it is certainly lucrative. So we will go to the presentation, but I will run through the quickly presentation because it is already getting late. See this is the general power that then the act itself. Uh, and then, uh, that's basically the entire process, you know, runs under the principle of natural justice. The entire, uh, you know, NCLT process will run under principle of natural justice. Uh, this is okay. Now, 
Yeah, see HCL also is directed by to dispose the cases uh, three months, both HCLT and NCLT uh, after moving the petition or after admitting my petition in any section, they are guided to dispose the you know petition within three months. So it is not a mandatory in the sense, but they are also guided by the time frame given in the act. So three months time frame is there. Then you, if they are not able to dispose within three months, then they should, in case of tribunal, they should get the permission from the chairman at uh, Delhi. And in case of appellate tribunal, they should get permission from the, uh, sorry, president from the, in case of tribunal, chairman in case of, from the appellate tribunal. They will write in writing why this is pending more than three months. Then appeal. Once NCLT passes an order, any aggrieved party can approach to the tribunal within 45 days, that is the initial time frame, and he is able to prove the sufficient cause uh, wherein he is not able to move within 45 days. Then another 45 days is given by the tribunal, appellate tribunal. Again, uh, you are agreed by the appellate tribunal order, you can file before the Supreme Court uh, within 60 days from the uh, Supreme Court only question of law, that you are aware of that. For the NCA appellate tribunal, you can go what is the fact, question of fact and question of law. Both the cases uh, appeal can be live. And in case Supreme Court, only the question of law. If it is question of fact, the tribunal order is the appellate tribunal order is the final. And the order which is passed with the consent of the both the parties. Suppose an operation mismanagement, both parties have come to a, a common understanding and they have exhibited some understanding and that was submitted to the tribunal based on that tribunal has passed the order. This particular order passed with the consent of the party, both the party, is not appealable. You can't go to the appellate tribunal or you can't go to the Supreme Court. Whatever the NCLT passes an order with the consent of the party is the final. Then it is already spoken, sir. Then this dress code also is spoken. CA Institute has not prescribed any dress code as per my understanding. But any long uh, sleeves uh, shirt, uh, you know, it should be decent uh, dress you should wear. Uh, there is no time you need to wear coat and all. But when it comes to our uh, company secretary institute, they have prescribed the coat, like blue jacket and white shirt, then tie, all those things are there. Even for ladies in our uh, CS profession, they have said that sober color dress uh, for ladies, again they should wear blue jacket, all those things are there with the tie. And then, of course, the lawyers, you know what they need to wear, that they won't dress. These are, basically, we are supposed to do it, uh, but it's not a new thing, but uh, if sometimes, you know, if you keep your phone on, then uh, judge may get irritated if your case is not, not to be here, then you will say, okay, go, tomorrow will listen, <laughs> something like that. So switch off phone, then you should be very clear that what exactly you want to speak, and be respectable to the bench and make note on the brief note, whatever they are discussing. See, many a time, um, judge would be dictating to the person and it is like a dictation to us also. He will say that party is directed to file so and so, date and so and so forms, means we should also make immediately note. Again, we cannot, because they will not put that noting into the order immediately. It may be placed in the website, maybe after some time. So, we need to also keep more. And we should be cooperative if it is oppression mismanagement, if there is opposite council or even major amalgamation, you will get a council from the RD and ROC, uh, OL, then you need to be very cooperative to them. And uh, of course, you should not speak. And the judge was telling that, you know, that you need not call your honor, but still you can, that is the, uh, I think Supreme Court has uh, said that you don't need to use the word, uh, my lord. That is, I think, is a British regime that people used to call now. Now, you can use your honor. Even sir also at Supreme Court level is okay, it is written. So, I think here we are speaking equally sir and also your honor. Even many lawyers are speaking my lord, my lord, but it's still okay. That already it was said sir, I don't want to repeat this. Uh, see, this again English sir was already speaking, any, you know, local language paper that you are going to submit, then you have to have an equal translator. Then the standard paper it is said and the page, page number should be. See, I have given a complete set of the, uh, in major case, I want to be more, you know, it should be more interesting to you. I have given, uh, here I am going to leave that paper, 
a complete documentation for the first stage application seeking the waiver of the creators meeting or shareholders meeting, I have prepared it here. I am going to share you people. So you can give it to the institute or whoever you want. Because uh, something you know, something should be very interesting so that you can start immediately instead of looking for the formats here and there. So paginated all those there, then so many. He is already spoken by the sir. And then as they said very clearly, triple it. You have to file in the one original. This is my practical experience. One original. The original petition supported by the affidavits and then admission form, then events, then you have a synopsis. This all these things should be in the legal sheet. One sided double space and left side, you know, for the cutter, you have to bind it in the book format. Space should be more than 5 centimeters. Should give that. And top, bottom also, there should be edge of sufficient. And page number, it is always better to put at the top. Because when you get Xerox for next set, if page numbers are down, the legal length, you may not get the page numbers. So my experience shows that you need to have the page numbers at the top. Page numbers can be written by hand. You don't need to put the typing. But page numbers, after leaving the petition, the every page, even suppose you find memorandum articles, both side print will be there. You have to write both the side page numbers. Till the end, you have to give and come to the index and give the equal number, same number, whatever reference numbers are there. And that triple set. See, now they are insisting, in NCLT Bangalore, they are insisting, except this uh, legal, what I told, the rest of the documents are an attachment. And all the attachment, even you have original, means like a board resolution will be original, shareholders resolution will be original in the letterhead of the company, still they are insisting, not. See, we got around to 500, 350 pages, not. All pages, not. All the pages, except this legal uh, sheets, balanced document should be not. See, there is a direction from the headquarters that this registry is supposed to verify these attachments with the originals of the company. They are asking to bring the originals. So they said we cannot do the verification, at least better you go and get the note. So once one set is ready, you get Xerox. Xerox could be even in the A4 size, it doesn't matter. Get Xerox at least four copies. Two copies along with original you submit to the bench. You keep one copy for you. At least one more copy given to the party. So this is the system they are looking. If there is an opposite party for each respondent, you have served the same. And you should prove that you have served them also. That a respondent should be given in advance before you move the petition here. Then caveat. I think you are aware of the caveat. Caveat is something like you are approaching, you are anticipating something someone will file against you and approaching various uh, court or tribunal saying that someone may file, remove uh, my, like I am a director of a company, they are trying to remove me. If they file an application to removal, don't pass an expert order without giving an opportunity. This is the caveat. This caveat uh, will be there for 90 days time. Which 90 days you have to renew the caveat? The caveat used to be that given a permit in NCLT in the form 3C. So caveat is something like a a new, new thing that you are expecting something will happen, someone will file a case against you before the tribunal and tribunal should give an opportunity to you before disposing of the case. Anticipated. Yes, anticipated. So tribunal cannot pass an order when there is a caveat. First they will look at the file whether there is a caveat connected to this. So they will serve, even for urgent matter also, they will almost all, you know, serve you and they will hurt you, then they will pass the order. That is a caveat. Caveat has been. See, this is the I told you already. See, these are the format in the same order we should have the documents in that. This is our present form. Yeah, I think we'll close in another five minutes. Okay. See, this this order which I have given now, I have got all the documents with me. All the documents I prepared in the word document. You can make use of this same order. I have written the payer and accounts officer, DD, NCA, everything I have written. Again, you see the internal credit order. It is something IAG is called. Suppose you have found a new fact after filing a case. 
and you want to bring that the knowledge of the judge. Then you have to move a separate application. That separate application again you should come back to NCLT one form only, supported by the uh, NCLT three attachment. Then after it, so this can be there. Uh, this NCLT one form and the uh, intellectual application should be signed by the party itself. So we cannot sign that. But if you want to submit, no, as a, something like a memorandum. The written memorandum, being a arguments written, all those things, that can be signed by a representative. Like memo can be submitted to submit some extra paper. Suppose advertisement was given, you can give it through a written memo to the bench. Again, that has to be the one plus two. Written arguments. Suppose judge says that you have a lot of things to argue, you put everything on paper because the written arguments will help them to write your order. So better to give the written argument in the in chronological order and they will narrate uh, before delivering the lecture, you know, judgment, in your judgment. If you, any rule requires you to advertise, advertisement should be given 14 days notice. There are there. The notice to opposite part. This, see, even in the proceedings before the NCL are subject to the Limitation Act. Whatever the provisions of the Limitation Act is there, many cases in IPC, uh, debt, time bar debt, they are rejected it in the insolvency bankruptcy court. They say that more than three years you are coming. Since there is a new act, you are invoking the provision. Since you, there is no life, you know, entitlement to get this debt, so you are barred from the time, time bar. Replies, resigner, all those things, regular only. <laughs> this hearing already are told that. This again they said that when ex parte will be passed. If the respondent doesn't present, then if it doesn't appear, then it will be ex parte. If the petitioner himself doesn't uh, come, then they will dismiss the petition. Uh, generally, this is like that uh, order will be, it is written in the act, it can be signed by president or it can be member or it can be a registrar, it can be some. So this is I am done now. So, my submission is very clear that, sir, let us take up, uh, you know, whatever it is, a new venue. And known a, known a venue it is. We are expert in the Companies Act 1956 as well in the 2013. And uh, uh, like a GSC also, we are taking, this also I suggest you take, uh, you know, lead. And let NCLT in Bangalore, you know, dispose of the case quickly because uh, we, we better, you know, we are better in presenting the facts of the case before the NCRT. So if you have any issues, I think we can discuss, otherwise we will close it. So I will show you the forms, uh, which are, these, these are the forms. I will leave it here. So if this can be shared by the bench. These are the, all the forms I have given, in, all are in the Word document only. So you can use it. If it needed, uh, you can contact me at any point. Thank you very much for each one of you. It is uh, beyond the schedule, still you are showing the basis and you Thank you. Thank you very much. Friends, uh, it has been a wonderful session, no matter uh, you know, uh, what was the crowd, but more than the quantity of the crowd, I am sure we had a quality of the crowd. So that really matters and uh, definitely we have enjoyed the today's session. Tirupal, it has been a wonderful session and lot of information. I think we need to have a bigger session, kind of a one day workshop or something, so that it should be more, more of a hands on experience for our members. Um, now I take this opportunity on behalf of the Rainbow Bench to thank uh, all the speakers and the Tripal uh, in particular and also uh, C. Ravi Prasad for organizing this program and also addressing our members. Sir, thank you very much sir. Thank now I request uh, C. A. Paramesh Kumar to come forward and present a memento to Sri C. S. Tirupal as a token of our appreciation. And also I request C. A. Ravi Prasad to come here and accept our uh, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Um, actually, uh, the chairperson Gita had to leave early because uh, we are not, uh, you know, uh, refresh a residential course in the session tomorrow morning. She is supposed to reach there, therefore, she has to leave early. And uh, we are going to see a day on 1st July. Uh, again, uh, 
next program is uh, there on uh, Saturday also, it is the tally and uh, training about the GST. Please make these opportunities. We would like to conclude our research in these words. Good night.